Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, folks, it's Tuesday on the Investigative Journal. Back for another day of fun and games in America, correct? And that's really all it is. Greg Anthony here. You're in the midst of a government shutdown. Why don't we shut the whole damn thing down? I mean, people are so hypocritical, especially, uh, this is the Investigative Journal, by the way, especially the truth groups. You know, everybody's going to be saying there's some hidden agenda behind the government uh, closure and it's not good well i think it is good close the whole damn thing down i mean why do you need this government to be honest with you it's grown into a monster that's going to devour you and the better the less uh you know the more we carve off of that uh evil elephant the better off we are but uh, we know we couldn't function one day in this country If the government shut down, nobody would know what to do because the government's telling us what to do. It's telling everybody out there that doesn't have a brain on their head anymore what to do. That's exactly what it is. How many people out there really are thinking people? Oh, I know there's some that listen to my show. And myself, I consider myself a thinking person. I've learned the tragedies of following the leader. I've learned how if you believe in this system of liberty, justice, and freedom for all, you're going to be devoured into this brainwashed system of either becoming a Republican conservative or a Democratic socialist. And that's what's going on. Can you imagine if the government completely shut down? First of all, there's a government shutdown now. What, 800,000 workers are affected? Can you imagine if it completely shut down? Everybody in this country would die in three days. They wouldn't know what to do. You know why? Because they rely on the government for everything. They rely on the government for how to think, how to speak, where to go to school, what to do. Oh, you know, but let's get rid of this terrible government. Nobody's ever going to get rid of it. It's grown. We've allowed it to grow into a monster, and it's going to devour us. Let me just make a few comments before I get into... My, one of my favorite topics of discussion is the Jesuits, uh, Jesuit General Lorenzo Ricci, and how the Jesuits fomented the American Revolution and basically control this country to this day, and how they did it. And then you wonder why people are so damn stupid in this country, because they won't even listen to it. All they're going to listen to is... You know, the reason there was the American Revolution is because we were taxed, what, 3 or 4% by Britain, by England, and we didn't, and our patriots didn't want that. How much are we taxed today? For example, even the rich, the rich are taxed on what, 37% Fed tax plus state tax? We're taxed here, look, 40, 50% of your income's going to the government. So why don't we revolt on our government? We revolted on Britain. For 3%, you know, the Tea Party, the whole shot. So why don't we revolt our country? Because they controlled that revolution to begin with, and you are nothing but a slave. And you know what? There were black slaves, and then once the 14th Amendment came into play in the, you know, the, you know when that happened, the time of Lincoln, after he was killed, uh, then we all were made slaves. And let's go back to that statement I made about taxes. We got some idiot. Do you realize what's going on in Congress? Their approval rating is, what, 9 to 10%, but yet they're paid, what, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and they still control the airwaves. They control your thinking. They go back to their constituency. And there's this... uh, Hispanic girl, 29 years old, who's, uh, who's put there probably by the Jesuits. Uh, Cortez is her last name. And she wants to have a 70, she's a socialist, 70% tax, free school for all, no homeless people in the country. Who the hell's going to pay for it? 
the middle class, but there aren't going to be any middle class anymore. That's right, no middle class anymore. And so, that's what we have. We have somebody in there that, if you listen to her, the other day she was talking about she wants to be considered a radical. And she's a radical, you know why? Because FDR was a radical. Uh, Lincoln was a radical. I mean, listen, FDR was a Jesuit pawn, and she is too. And all of these people are going to get us back to one way. It's going to be a fascist, socialist country where they're going to be controlling every dollar that's spent and everything that you do down to what you even say. That's how bad it's going to get. That's how bad it is going to get. Okay, I, I really don't want to waste much time talking about the problems of the United States government. And the reason I, I don't want to do that is because we all know, at least on this show, that this government is there for one reason and one reason alone. That is to usurp everything that has to do with an individual's rights and liberties using a constitution that grants that <laughs> as a tool. And this type of government is the most insidious of them all. I'd rather live in a dictatorship. At least you know right up front what these people are about. But these people do everything behind the scenes deceptively. Everything that's black is white. You've heard the old saying, everything that's right is wrong. The heroes are villains. The villains are heroes. And it goes on and on and on. So I don't want to waste too much time. You can do that on your own and get swallowed up into either believing that there's a hope that the Democrats or the Republicans will pull you out of it. And all of these people, if you listen to the nonsense of the so-called intelligentsia of our country. And let me pinpoint this. Let's start out with the politicians who are there, one, only for uh, public relation purposes. Then you have the media. Then you have the financial people. Then you have the lawyers. And then you have the judges. And no one seems to understand that none of them ever get to the bottom of the problem or even want to talk about it. You can listen to your ears fall off and never get to the bottom of the truth. The question is, all right, you're going to sit there and worry about the government shutdown? You're going to worry about some socialist congressmen? Are you going to spend your life researching how the Clinton cartel used to bring drugs into Maine County in, in uh, Arkansas? They're all great stories. You can spend your life being entertained by these drug lords, by these people who work to... Now, Fox News is doing a study. Listen to what they're asking. They're asking the government to turn over all the documents that have been hidden since 1974 or 5 on the Jimmy Hoffa case. They want to know who killed Jimmy Hoffa. Boy, they're really investigative journalists, right? Why don't you start investigating who the hell runs Georgetown University and the White House? And what the hell the Jesuits have been doing for the last 200 some years in this country? If you want to solve any problems, but they're more worried about Jimmy Hoffa. And it goes on and on. It's enough to drive somebody crazy that starts understanding the truth. And unfortunately, when you start figuring this whole scheme out, man... You will go crazy. I'm a perfect example. Well, that's what they'll call you. I don't know how many times when this thing was first starting years ago, when I first started talking about the Jesuits heavily and saying, listen, you know, I'm a pretty credible person. I was in Rome. I got a law degree. I mean, I'm a journalist. Why not talk about it? Oh, boy. Did I get hit left and right? He's crazy. He's a nutcase. And it went on and on, attacked by Alex Jones, the supposed, you know, bastion of freedom on the Internet. 
I had people in towns I lived in that used to listen and say, hey, did you see what Alex Jones said about Greg? He's actually a CIA operative. I'm living in this little town. They think I'm working for the CIA. My God, I wish I was. How much money would I have in my pocket? Look at the story of Barry Seal. Look him up. <laughs> and I, they just did a thing with Tom Cruise on Barry Seal, and that's all. He was the drug-running pilot that worked with Clinton that they had to finally kill. And they made it look like he was the one that backstabbed the, the government and worked with the cartels, when in fact, do you think he was the only one, the recipient of billions of dollars, millions coming in weekly, daily? Come on. That's how they twist these stories. Then, then look at, you know, go to a movie they've been playing on Netflix. At, you get it at once every week now. It's called Angels and Demons. And it's a story about how the Illuminati infiltrated the Vatican, and the good Vatican is going to weed them out. And you know who's helping them do that? Professor uh, Langhorn or Langdon. And that's played by uh, our good buddy, you know, some of our, we got Tom, we got, uh, what's his name, Ron Howard and Tom Hanks playing the major part. When that movie was being made, they were in Rome getting money from the Cardinals and uh, <laughs> the Pope. And the whole story is ass backwards. The Vatican is the Illuminati. And so it goes on and on and on. It's enough to drive you nuts. Now, let's talk. I mentioned everybody in the intelligentsia here that keeps the truth from you. And that goes for, you know, people like these Harvard Law professors that get on Fox News and pontificate about the justice system. And none of these people ever will tell you the truth. They're all working together. I mean, if this guy, a couple of these professors, I mean, you've got them all over the place. If they don't have the sense to research this stuff and talk the truth to you about it, they work with these people. There's no other way around it. And I can't understand how America, once they hear this story, you don't know how many times people say, Greg, your show and shows like you should be heard by millions. Yeah, well, why aren't they? It's a great story. It's a better story than Barry Seal. It's a better story than finding out who killed Jimmy Hoffa. And the reason it is not heard by millions is there is an effort to keep the truth, at least, let's not use the word truth, keep this story from you so you don't have the opportunity to really uncover these secret societies. And all of the things we talk about, from spiritualism that's been turned over to mysticism, uh, and all of these people working in this Luciferian movement, called ecumenical movement run by the Pope and you see it, see it every day when you start looking at the pulpits in this country then you look at the political system then you look at what's hitting you from abroad China I mean my god when you look at what they're I mean it's so obvious what they're doing with China and they're doing a slow transition to where they become the world power. The national, the, the monetary currency will change in the world. The dollar will go down. And this will be a third world country. As they've done before, they've done this over and over again. Look at what they did to Germany, etc., etc. So, I mean, this game that they play with you, somebody has started a board game called the Jesuits uh, Control the World or something. At least have some fun with it. But, you know, when we talk about yesterday, we talked a little bit about this, the ecumenical fakes movement, how Jesuitism, Luciferianism equals the Antichrist movement that they're going to uh, thrust upon you. And all Christians will be swallowed up into this, except for the, the few, the mighty few, who, who are strong enough to resist and say, no, we know we can't change this Luciferian world, but we're not going to be a part of it. Now, 
as we go farther, we start seeing, you know, even in our entertainment world, you're getting barraged with craziness that you see on TV. I mean, there, these, how many times have you looked, you know, watched a movie from the 50s and go, God, I wish I could watch a movie like that again. It was stupid. It was entertaining. It was simple. But now, I mean, if you watch these movies, man, Hollywood is nothing but a sea of Luciferianism pushing every type of depravity known to man and telling you basically, it doesn't matter, you're not a man, you're not a woman, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're degrading the, the, the actual you in you and people accept it. You know, we got kids going to school going, hey, you can decide what gender you are, even if you're born a man or a woman. It's up to you. It's natural. And then you get these pedophiles like Kevin Spacey making millions of dollars with that, what's the show he does, House of Cards. And then he gets, he does a, uh, you know, he's been nailed in, uh, I think he's just a spokesman for pedophilia. You know, he gets nailed for pedophilia playing with a minor in Massachusetts, Nantucket, Massachusetts. And then he does some goofy video justifying it. I mean, it's insane what you're listening to. Uh, go to, you know, I was just, I mean, the story that is so interesting. You know, I was looking uh, at Michelle Obama. She's being touted as the woman of the year. You know, billion, millions of copies of her book being sold. And isn't it interesting that Joan Rivers was, you know, died. She was an older woman. But after she outed Michelle as being a transgender, actually being a man, and then very soon after Joan Rivers was dead, it's pretty obvious, you know, people should go, well, is she a man or a woman? I mean, and then you go to the Internet and you see a lot of evidence that she isn't a, a woman. And then even a couple times, Obama in speech has called her Michael. I mean, how often, if you're married to a real woman and you're a man and your wife doesn't have one of these names that are uh, not gender specific, but uh, for example, if your wife was named Michelle, which is not a man's name I guess in France are they is there a guy yeah maybe in France but not here in America okay when how often you're gonna call her Michael not very you're not gonna but he did it a couple times in speeches and it goes right over the heads of people oh he just made a mistake and why would Joan Rivers say you know hey everybody knows she's a transgender but now that's normal so why don't they just come out and tell you? Because this is a game they're playing. They realize still that if they came out and said Michelle Obama, if Obama just said, hey, I'm not a man, I'm a transgender, that half of America still would be, they'd never get elected. In fact, they don't, I don't even know why they care because they're all selected anyway. So, you get off on these tangents with these stories, and let's just say that Michelle Obama is a man, guys, in Hollywood and in the White House. And I'm telling you, it will get to the point when basically uh, she will be the vanguard for this, saying, I had to, I came out of the closet. Wait till that happens. You know, she's going to admit she had to come out of the closet years down the road. You know, after white America has been put in its place, men have been put in the, their place. I mean, what's going on now? This anti-male movement is ridiculous. But it's really, uh, this feminine movement is all related to what we talked about yesterday, the goddess, the worshipping of a goddess, the worshipping of Mary in the Catholic Church over Jesus. I mean, Mary is not a biblical figure. Just a, She was just, in Bible talk, just the uh, mother of God. 
the mother of Jesus. That was it. Jesus was the main figure. But the Vatican has changed that. And they create Mother Mary uh, visions. She's come back to talk to people. She's always in a cave, which is a very pagan thing. Worshipped in a cave. And so it goes on and on. You could sit here forever and come up with all of these stories that are so good, better than what you get on the mainstream. But how come you don't get the truth from any of these guys? And to, to coin a phrase by an, a, a right-wing talk show host who has a show on Fox, these people are too stupid to be governing. These people are too stupid to be broadcasting. And he was referring to people in Congress that said stupid things. Like, did you ever, you know, you know, look, one indication that this is a controlled situation was the words of a freshman congresswoman. Her name was uh, Salid, I think. She's one of the second, I think, the second Muslim woman to become a congresswoman in the Democratic Party. And when saying that Trump should be impeached, she used the MF word. Right in, right, right there in this, uh, it was some kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, charity event and her children were there. But they're using these, I mean, nobody does that. You know, the, you know, we're, got, we're entering into a time where they are going to dismantle and create this kind of fascist world based on socialism that's never worked anywhere. And pretty soon the borders are going to be flooded. You're going to have people uh, here not to ever... The people that are coming in now will never see the glorious America that uh, was, was here for a number of years, at least the propaganda about the glorious America where you could still buy a house, things like that. It, they're entering into an America that's going to end up socialist, fascist, it, after after the big war hits and everybody gets destroyed anyway. So there's a lot of great things to look forward to, right, with these people once you start understanding their maneuvers. And if more people understood it, they couldn't do it. You see, they still have to lie and deceive you to get there. And you get no help in ever uncovering what they're really up to. So, we got a minute and a half in this half hour. And got absolutely nothing accomplished, right? Absolutely zero. We had a lot of nice talking, a lot of nice thinking, you know, and a lot of the things I said you're probably imagining. But nothing is ever going to get accomplished because the system is set up to create, in a sense, dissidents like myself that go nowhere with good information that should be out there in the public because they control what they want you to think about. That's the reason for the Internet. That's the reason for technology now. It isn't to advance mankind. It is to control mankind. And maybe in the second half hour, we'll take a stroll back in history and give you something to think about, about really how uh, our country was formed for what reasons. And I say it wasn't because of the taxes being levied on us by England. That were only 3 to 4%. And we revolted. Now, how high are taxes? Why don't we revolt now? We can't. The reason we can't is the elite don't want to. They controlled the revolt back then. And they control what's going on today. And it's okay that you're paying 40 to 50% in tax, right? Tax us more. Man, if you're going to live in California, they got a new governor that's going into office today making a speech. And it sounds like, you know, California, if California's not bankrupt in three days, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Boy, his ideas are crazy. Uh, back in three minutes on the investigative journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. 
In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following program is labeled as dangerous and off limits by the Supreme Jesuit Command. But stand tall, people. Listen up, and you may just learn something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, folks, back for the second half hour this Tuesday on the Investigative Journal. Where did we leave off? Wow. Uh, go to my first half hour, and uh, I, I ask you to send it to, if you're listening, send it to some of these mainstream stations and see if we could ever get this show on the air. Do you think they're going to pay uh, to get their own inform this information out? To no. They want to pay people to hide this information. That's what they do. But anyway, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Let me start out by saying this. I do want to discuss the Revolutionary War, the Jesuit connection to it. And I will do that today. And I've done it in the past. And it seems to go in one ear and out the other of people. They just get this idea that the Revolutionary War was about taxes, about money. No, no, no. It was a religious war, if there ever was one. Now, uh, this idea of Jesu anti-Jesuitism, the Vatican, uh, the, you know, controlling, inspirational to the Luciferians in our government and, sp and stuff like this, the glue that holds everything together because of their background and their number of years in uh, distorting history as well as basically... Uh, looking at the tyrannical Vatican and Jesuit order and what their goals have been throughout the course of hundreds of years makes them the prime candidates for all of these stupid politicians to go for information how to do this. How can we control our population if we're in China? Well, China does it through a fascistic kind of way out in the open, right? We do it through democracy. And we have to do it a little bit more deceptively. We have to put out the idea that we are free. This is the freest country in the world. And the best thing America's done, they got the best PR campaign in the world. That's it. They can really sell you a product. 
They can change white into black, black into white, etc., etc. But anyway, doing a little research on who actually is out there talking about the Jesuits, most of these people, and I'm, there's a few exceptions, of course. I know one personally as an attorney by the name of John Levy. He doesn't do it for really spiritual reasons. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, I'm not sure of Avro Manhattan's background, but most everybody else that I have found wants to talk about the true Vatican and the Jesuits' true goal are involved in some kind of spiritual endeavor. What do I mean by that? When I was looking in America to find people who understood this subject, because what happened to me, I was in Rome, and this was back in the 80s when I didn't know much about anything. Thought I did. And I learned about the Vatican's role in the secular world through being in Rome when they were going through this big, huge Vatican bank scandal that I've talked about many times. And that basically talking about the P2 Masonic Lodge and et cetera, et cetera. It opened up my eyes to a whole new world. So when I came to America, I did them the thing that most people do. I want to forget about what I learned in Rome. I am not going to go down that road because there's no future of it. And I did. I forgot about it for a while until I couldn't live with myself anymore because I was thinking, well, I better get back into journalism. And I said, man, I want to find out the truth. So I started talking about it. And boy, <laughs> I found out this. So I said, I got to find out who understands this, like some of the things I understood in Rome. And then I found it was usually Bible-believing Christians, okay? And, a, and it was always a spiritual uh, exercise for them. Most of it was involved with biblical stuff, but nobody really, uh, well, they started talking about finances, the secular world, things like that. But it was always, it seemed to me, Seventh-day Adventist, then there's Walter Veith, Seventh-day Adventist uh, talk against the Vatican, etc., etc. A lot of uh, spiritual people who understood that the Protestants were persecuted and killed in the Inquisition. But how many atheists or secular people were out there doing it? Not many. Not many. I'm sure there's a few. But I found it quite interesting that most of the people here in America that talk about the Vatican are talking about it from their point of view of the uh, mostly Bible believers who've been persecuted in one way or the other, or, or feel bad because their brethren have been persecuted in the past. So that's an interesting thing to remember. Now, when they try to go out and talk to other people, it's pretty hard, because a lot of people in America don't really give a damn about America's turning into this kind of culture and this is all about Jesuitism and new age uh, look to the stars to find uh, gods and goddesses you know it's a mysticism thing it's a uh, straying away from any kind of the old religious beliefs so these people uh, seem to fall into a category of trying to say listen please read the Bible and then you'll understand the Vatican but people go I ain't reading that book no way so uh, that's just a general way of looking at who here in America is trying to figure out this problem of the Jesuit Vatican connection to things like uh, our government, to things like Freemasonry, secret societies, Luciferianism, New World Order, and put it all together and try to figure out why the hell people in the secular world are not getting onto it. And that's interesting because then you have to start thinking in terms of this. Remember I said the other day when we were talking about Martin Luther and uh, his Protestant movement, he was a Vatican priest. So my question always was, was he a plant? Did he do this on purpose? Because they like to do that, you know. They like to start these revolutions and uh, then control them for a purpose. So you have to look and say, was Martin Luther for real, or was he there to really instigate and push 
Protestantism to a point where many millions could be killed then, justifying it by stating that the Catholic Church is under siege. And <clears throat> that was all to do with the Gutenberg Press and uh, how the Bible was being read by more people. So the question becomes, was he for real or not? So then you get a lot of Jesuit, anti-Jesuit people now, and even in the spiritual world, in the Christian world. And my question was always this, to every one of them I met, were they for real or were they plants? Could they be a plant like Martin Luther King? Or, <laughs> isn't that interesting? Uh, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther, did they, oh, how come he has the same name? Nobody, you know, I just always ask those stupid questions. Uh, was it a coincidence? Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, okay. They got a street in Chicago, Martin Luther King Drive. Okay, Martin Luther, Protestantism. All right, maybe he was named after it by his daddy who liked Martin Luther. I don't know, but it's a question you got to ask. It's kind of like the same thing. How come George Bush's, the daddy who just died, George H. Bush, gave his New World Order speech on September 11th, 1991? How come they 9-11 was on September 11th, 2001? How come Benghazi was on September 11th? Are they, are they using my birthday for some reason? <laughs> oh, God. Are we in trouble, but we don't even have to, 90% of the people don't realize it. And maybe they figure, what the hell, I'm only here for 70 years, well, what do I care? But anyway, so we look at this, uh, we look at the people who are pushing this agenda, and then we have to always ask those questions. Are they on the right side, or were they put there by Jesuits to do that for a reason? And you know, there's a lot of uh, those ecumenical pastors out there these evangelistic pastors out there on TV that are doing that. So you got to beware. Always remember this. When there's a fox in the hen house, you better be sure that the fox is up to something and not forget about who the fox really is. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, Revolutionary War. Okay, I think uh, the American Revolutionary War is a good place to start if you want to answer the question, how did we get here? And you hear even a lot of mainstream talk show hosts say that. Uh, they'll say some story about, uh, boy, look at what the Democratic Party has turned, uh, turned out to be, or the liberals and CNN will say something like, look at how did we get here with such a fascist like Trump? He's like Hitler. And the real point is they're asking, how did we get here? But uh, they really don't want to answer that question. And if they really want to know how they got there, the Revolutionary War is a pretty good place to start. And of course, I would recommend going way farther than that, going back farther than that, and looking to Rome and the Vatican and many, many things that add up once you start putting this puzzle together. But that won't happen. So, uh, there's two ways to really look at the Revolutionary War, I guess. One as the uh, traditional way that you get in history books in college and talking about the Boston Tea Party. It's, it's all a real political war, right? It's us against the England. Uh, the Patriots wanting overtaxed, situations like that. And when I learned about the Revolutionary War in college, uh, I bought it hook, line, and sinker. Pretty revisionist view once I started to learn things behind the scenes that were never told to me. Let's just broadly say it was never really discussed that the Revolutionary War was a religious war. And so I felt deceived. I felt, in a sense, uh, made this statement many times, I should get my money back from the university for these classes. But then I said that in a general way because I was getting a scholarship, so... I guess I would have a problem getting my money back when I didn't pay for it to begin with. <laughs> I got it on an athletic scholarship. 
Okay, so you can look at it that way or you can start looking at it another way. And that is that it was a religious war and there's much more behind the scenes with the Vatican and the Jesuits and other connections that are never discussed. And is that a good or bad thing? It should be a good thing if you're a historian, right? But it isn't. Now, let's look at what you can read in the mainstream real quick. You're looking and going, well, Greg just said that the Vatican and the Jesuits and Jesuit General Lorenzo Ricci may have been involved in a nefarious plan to get into America and then change it from within and gain power for Rome and the Jesuits and the Vatican. When in the beginning of this country, they weren't, weren't many here. So that's an interesting way to look at it. But let's look at what you may just read when you're doing that. And if you just stop with this paragraph that I'm going to read, then you'll say, well, Greg's off his rock or just like these other anti-Jesuit Vatican people. But by 1700, you're going to read something that Jesuits were in the colonies really had abandoned their original purpose of evangelizing American Indians and focused their attention on the Catholics of European descent living in Maryland. Well, even that, I'm going to add something, even that paragraph is a little misleading because they were never involved in evangelizing Indians. They were involved in killing them with their Jesuit schools. That really never ended. And if you want to check it out, there's been a lawsuit even only like five, six years ago where the Timaki Law Firm in the Northwest, up in Washington, sued the Jesuits for their atrocities of a, a Native American mission school and were paid $212 million or so. So this is real. They weren't there to evangelize. And they their focus of attention never was lost on the basically genociding the American Indians that were left through their schools and also doing a little bit of pedophilia on the side. But they did focus their attention right on the Catholics living in Maryland. There were so few. I mean, geez. Why focus your attention on a minority of people in Maryland? Pennsylvania and New York, though. Long journeys on horseback allowed members of the Maryland mission to offer mass and the sacraments to their far-flung flock. Despite limited resources and severe restrictions on Catholic worship. In the first decades of the 18th century, despite the persistence of those restrictions and despite the fact that Catholics were a minority even in Maryland, the wealth and confidence of the colony Catholics grew. Children of the Catholic gentry became, began to enter orders in Europe, including the Society of Jesus. Jesuits established new plantations on Maryland's eastern shore, started an academy for boys, and had a church built in Baltimore. Now, when you read that, you, behind the scenes, you're, you know, between the lines, you're going, oh, the Catholics were persecuted in America by these terrible Protestants. And now look at them. They're fighting back. They're getting this through education, through going back to European schools. So what they're doing here with you is automatically telling you that the Protestants were the assholes and the Catholics were just a minority being oppressed and that had to change in America. Uh, let's read on. I think you know what I'm getting to. The children of the Catholic gentry began to enter orders, like I said, by the second and third century. Jesuits were increasingly active, third of the century, second, third of the century. Jesuits were increasingly active in Philadelphia and, and a few ministered to German-speaking farmers in the southeastern part of Pennsylvania. Yet the mission remained tiny, consisting of fewer than two dozen priests and attracting little interest from the English province. Now how, ask yourself a question. Why don't you ever discuss you mainstream people, if a few dozen priests were in America, how come? I mean, there was a reason. They were persona non grata here. The Protestants didn't want them here because they were fearing that they would be persecuted like the Vatican did in Europe. 
in the Inquisition. So they came here to get away from that persecution. Do you think the Vatican ever had its eye on this country? Sure they did. Their goal was to get here in flocks and droves and take it over. So ask yourself this, you great historians. If there were only a few dozen priests here before the Revolutionary War, how come now? Look at the Catholic Church in this country now. I mean, doesn't that tell you something? Yeah, something that they don't want to talk about. The real reason behind the Revolutionary War. And it's a religious war, too. Most likely more of a religious war than anything else. By the second... Okay, so... Yet the this mission remained tiny, right? Consisting of fewer than two dozen priests. Despite their scant numbers and modest ambitions, this little band provoked mistrust. Oh, really? Protestant colonists believe Jesuits conspired to provoke slave rebellions and lead with Indians and the French. They and all Catholics were thought to be enemies to liberty and patriotism. New York City enjoyed annual gay fox parades in which the Pope was burned in effigy, and colonists read and contributed to a transatlantic point culture of mockery and condemnation. All oh, those poor Catholics. That's what you're thinking, right? We can't allow that to go on in America. Let me tell you something. They had it right. And they should have never, if this world was in the right, moving in the right direction, and the Vatican Jesuits and the people working for them at the time, their minions in government, in finance, etc., etc., didn't begin this revolutionary war for a different purpose we wouldn't be in the position we're in today. Because this little band that provoked mistrust, they were, they were basically, these Protestants were right. But they had no chance against a power that they little, they didn't really understand. They understood it on the surface. They knew that the Vatican was an evil group, but they didn't realize what they were up against and how they were even at this point being used in America, so that one day, look at 2019 and the power and the, and, the, and the educational system and the political connections that this organization has. Of course, they don't tell you, and they're still depicted as this great holy church with the holiest man in the world sitting in Rome. What a crock. But that's how it works, and most people believe it. So, let me check the time okay we got about three minutes so you know in 1774 you're going to read news of the society's suppression arrived in maryland now at that particular juncture the vatican on its face it publicly got the information out it didn't travel by email quickly in a day it didn't travel through uh, the internet they weren't skyping each other back then but word got over to the protestants here that the jesuits had been suppressed the vatican finally has had enough with these evil guys so basically guess what even if you look at the mainstream view they don't talk about this in the mainstream you got to go and you'll find historians that talk in these terms that the Vatican, uh, and you'll even get all the information, decided to disband the Jesuits. And this was right before the Revolutionary War, folks. You don't think all these revolutions during that period of time were connected? There was the French, and you go on and on. Many, many revolutions during this period of time, and you can bet the Jesuits were behind every single one of them. But here now, the Protestants said, wow, there's no longer the Jesuits. But did they really understand the Vatican? No. They didn't realize that the Vatican could also work together with them. And that possibly the Jesuits really weren't suppressed, but that this public knowledge that they were would basically stream down to the colonies and the Protestants would say to themselves, we don't have to worry about the Jesuits anymore. But when is an enemy most 
powerful and effective? When your guard is down and you don't even know the enemy exists, they can get away with more than if they were a formidable enemy that you knew existed. So did this occur? Now, even some of your anti-Jesuit mm, researchers will gloss over this and say, yes, the Vatican disbanded the Jesuits because the Vatican saw their evil and there were good people in the Vatican. And this is one signal that they may be compromised or stupid because I don't think it went that way. I don't think so. I think the Jesuits had control and this was a plot used by them to basically disband themselves let the Protestants think their guard was down so they could get away with even more. And their goal was the New World. They're one of the, they wanted this place. So if you look back at some of the facts that are never talked about, I'm going to give you a little hint. There's a case, there was a, there was a lawsuit and a court trial, there's public record of it, of a case in Portugal that explains this, the position I just mentioned and shows you evidence that the Jesuits were involved in their own demise for a reason. And it's pretty clear. And this could, and, and any historian should be able to point this out and put this story on the table. Not saying it's true or false, but just saying, hey, it's credible. Look at what happened at this court case. But then again, I'll leave you with this. Why don't we even know about the court case Lincoln was involved with against the Jesuits back before he was president. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.